Hi, I'm Christian Howe. Hi, and I'm Chris Reeve. And in this how-to, we're going to look at several different lighting techniques to really help you get the most out of those portraits and nail that shot. We're shooting two very simple setups here, broad and short lighting. Each effect can be achieved using a single key light lighting one side of the face. You can add lights and reflectors to help fill the shadows. I've only used a single light as it makes it easier to see how the light and shadows affect the shape of the face. For this example, I'm using a single Gemini head with a 60x80 softbox. So here we're looking at broad lighting and this refers to lighting the broadest side of the face which is usually closest to the camera from the ear to the chin, with the nose furthest from the key light. It makes the face look very large, since the studio light is lighting the majority of the face. As the model turns to face the camera more, it will help reduce the broadness of the lighting and make the face look less flat. We're now using short lighting, basically opposite to broad lighting, and we're now lighting the side of the face which is furthest from the camera. The difference to the broad lighting example is that we have now moved the key light to camera left. Short lighting can have the effect of making rounder faces look slimmer, as from the camera's perspective, less of the face is lit. Now all you have to do is meter up and start shooting. Don't be afraid to experiment as everybody's face is different. Rembrandt lighting is very similar to short lighting. All I've done in this example is move the softbox around, raise it up slightly in order to try and achieve a small inverted triangle on the far side of the model's face. We achieve this effect by modifying the short lighting setup. If you want a small inverted triangle on the shadow side of the face, try raising the key light more or using a much tighter light source such as a honeycomb grid. Okay, just time to meter up and then start shooting. Butterfly lighting creates a totally different effect and it refers to the shadow cast under the nose of the model. You will need to suspend the key light directly above the subject so that the shadows are all cast downwards. This creates a very moody and dramatic effect whilst elongating the facial features. It is more flexible when your subject is moving a lot providing that they remain under the light. Movement of the head will of course change the shape of the face. Okay, so we've metered up, adjusted the light, now it's time to shoot. Once you've got to grips with the lighting, it's a great idea to start utilising reflectors and field lights and hair lights to lift shadows and create different effects. A Bowen Silver Disc Reflector is a really good alternative to a second light when you want to lift those dark shadows. A second light will allow you to increase and decrease the amount of fill light to more finely control the shadow detail. Remember, don't get uptight about these effects. This is your opportunity to play around with them and create some really interesting shapes. Get your studio as dark as possible and use the modelling capability on your Bowen's head to shape your subject's face. Thanks for that Christian, great shots. Now let's look at a few tips to get you started. Keep it simple. On the Rembrandt shot, we used one small Bowen softbox. You don't need packs of equipment to recreate this shot, but just have some fun. Look at paintings by Vermeer and Rembrandt and look at how they use light in their paintings and try and emulate it in some of your photographs. Artists have always been inspirations for photographers. Just to recap from Christian's shoot, short lighting has the effect of making rounder faces look slimmer while broad lighting makes a face look larger and more two-dimensional. With the Rembrandt style of lighting, if you want to increase the size of the inverted triangular highlight under the eyes, simply move the light closer to the camera's axis. Thanks Chris, they're great tips. 
There you have it, several different ways in which you can shape the model's face in order to achieve different effects. Now remember to check us out on the Boeing's website and we'll see you next time on How To.